Hey, good afternoon, Facebook friends. This is Dr. Woody Myers, and I am coming to you uh, this afternoon. A lovely, lovely afternoon here in Indi Indiana. Uh, just got back from a great trip to, uh, to Lake County. Um, I am uh, in the car this afternoon with our political director, uh, Harry Johnson, who's got the wheel, and then, of course, uh, our Deputy Finance Director, Jack Metcalf, uh, in the back. Uh, we are uh, heading south now on Interstate 65, about mile marker number 203. Uh, perfect temperature, 70 plus degrees. Uh, beautiful, partly cloudy sky. Uh, just, you could not ask for a better uh, Indiana day. Uh, we're coming to a, a very interesting part uh, of the state. Uh, we are now uh, looking at, let me switch the camera around here, uh, the, uh, the, the wind turbines uh, in the uh, Meadow Lake uh, wind turbine area, uh, which is a, a huge uh, wind turbine farm that's, that I-65 kind of cuts right through, uh, right here in the, uh, in the heartland. Uh, these wind turbines uh, were placed here uh, several years ago, uh, because uh, the technology got uh, the technology improvements got to the point where it was very clear you could generate uh, renewable energy uh, with wind in Indiana. For years, they said you couldn't do it, uh, but uh, this uh, project is one of many that's proven uh, that uh, incorrect. Uh, these uh, turbines uh, generate enough energy for about 203,000. Uh, Indiana homes uh, and the great thing about the energy that they that they generate uh, there is no air pollution involved uh, and that means that there are no particulates uh, in the air from these uh, ener energy generating turbines that uh, lodge in people's lungs causing uh, heart disease uh, lung disease and a variety of other problems especially for those who have uh, 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 asthma and some other uh, some other uh, conditions uh, we're also uh, right in the heart of uh, the, the gorgeous uh, Hoosier farm farmland. Uh, we we can see uh, the corn is doing very well. It used to be that you uh, judged the, the corn by the phrase knee high by the 4th of July. Uh, well, in Indiana, uh, we don't do that anymore. Uh, we know that uh, the, uh, the technology is such today that uh, uh, the, the, the farmers have figured out a way to grow it even uh, faster than that and better than that. Uh, it's like waist high, it's not chest high now. Uh, and so it looks like it's going to be a terrific harvest uh, this year. And, and I'm happy for them uh, because uh, uh, the, the past years haven't been as, 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 as productive as some had hoped. And I'm just hopeful that this year's harvest is going to be great. Um, we were up in Lake County uh, to do a number of things. Uh, we had a terrific visit this morning uh, with uh, the mayor of Gary, Indiana, Mayor Jerome Prince, uh, a very dedicated public service who took that office uh, back in uh, January, uh, inherited uh, a number of difficulties that he's working his way through. Of course, uh, when he became uh, mayor, uh, no one had heard the term COVID-19. Uh, and uh, it certainly wasn't on his uh, agenda when he was campaigning for the office, uh, but he has adjusted, he and his team, uh, as best one can. Uh, they have huge uh, challenges uh, uh, with their economic uh, development programs, challenges that uh, a myers Lawson administration are, are definitely going to help out with. Uh, we know that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the citizens of Gary, which is I think now our third largest uh, uh, city in the state, uh, uh, are, uh, are incredibly industrious people that want their families to do well and to succeed just like everywhere else in the state. And, and I just know that, uh, that uh, with some help, uh, Mayor Prince is going to get that, get, that, uh, get that job done. Uh, we talked with him as well about uh, uh, some of the, uh, the other issues that uh, are going on up in uh, Lake County, uh, uh, the economic uh, issues uh, with uh, unemployment uh, primarily aggravated by uh, the COVID-19 situation, uh, the many businesses that have been uh, that have been unable to get back to a normal operation. Uh, we talked about uh, the school system, 
uh, and uh, the challenges that they have as, as well. Uh, and we talked about the, the fact that, uh, that we needed a new approach uh, in state government, one that's uh, far more cooperative between the city uh, and the state. And we pledged each other that we were going to work uh, exceptionally well together uh, in the next uh, administration. Uh, after that uh, visit, uh, we headed uh, a little bit south and met with the, uh, the county chairman, uh, Jim Weezer. Jim is a phenomenal guy who's uh, had a, a, a lot of success here in Lake, up in Lake County on bringing uh, uh, the number of Democrats uh, into various uh, offices. Uh, and uh, by doing that, uh, he has made it uh, a, a lot better for uh, Democrats in this uh, part of the state. Uh, he has been uh, successful in recruiting a lot of younger candidates uh, uh, as well. Uh, Jim uh, is, a, is a lawyer, has been very involved in, uh, in voting rights uh, related to issues throughout his career, but especially now in his role as, as county uh, chair, he's looking at those uh, very carefully. We talked about the fact that in Indiana, we have some of the most restrictive voting laws uh, in the nation. Uh, why would you want to close the polls at uh, at why would you want to close the polls at uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, that just makes uh, that just makes no sense at all. It's it's uh, it's it's certainly difficult for working people to get to to get to vote out get out to vote at, at any point in time during the day. But we've got to extend the voting hours and we've got to make it uh, no fault uh, absentee ballot voting. Uh, uh, th that was very successful during the primary that we had in. Uh, uh, June, uh, we uh, we did that uh, quite nicely, uh, just like other states have done now for years. Uh, uh, there are those who would like to tell you that there's all kinds of fraud associated with mail-in ballots. That's absolute malarkey. Uh, it just doesn't happen in in the ways that uh, people would like for you. Some people would like for you to believe. In fact, if you talk to the people in Oregon, they've been voting by mail for years. They love it. They're never going to go back. And, that's a primarily Democratic state. If you talk to the, uh, the folks in uh, Utah, a primarily Republican state, uh, they love it uh, as well. Uh, so uh, I just think it's time for Indiana and other states to look at uh, no-fault absentee voting by mail uh, and having uh, early voting readily available. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've got to make uh, voting as safe as possible. So there are a lot of innovations that that uh, I will certainly want to explore uh, with my partner, uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, candidate uh, Linda Loss, and uh, uh, certainly uh, in January when we were uh, we are scheduled to take office, assuming we can get your votes uh, and get the the 1.25 to 1.3 million votes that we need to to do that. Uh, after meeting with uh, Jim, we had a terrific opportunity to sit with uh, one of our our newest uh, state representatives, uh, Representative. Uh, Carolyn and Jackson, who actually took uh, the, the seat that uh, Linda Lawson used to have. Uh, her district uh, is uh, bordered uh, by the state of Illinois on the north and the uh, and the west. Uh, she has a, a lot of the citizens of Hammond, Indiana, as a part of her district. Uh, she's a phenomenal woman, uh, very knowledgeable about the issues. Uh, uh, we talked a lot about COVID-19, uh, and she told me something I, I still find it hard to believe that. Here we are in the middle of a global pandemic, uh, with with Gary and Hammond being uh, two of the largest cities in our state, and the contractor that the governor has hired in order to do testing, testing that couldn't be done adequately by the, the state health department, the contractor that the government hired doesn't have a permanent site uh, in Hammond or, or in Gary. Uh, I, I just think, well, gosh, that has to be a mistake. I mean, no, 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 no they, there is no site. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask that question uh, uh, when, when I get back. Why haven't they done that? And, and, and see what we can do to make sure that uh, we move uh, as, expeditiously, as expeditiously as we can uh, in, in that direction. It just makes no sense that, that uh, a city, uh, uh, cities of that size don't have access to a, a permanent site for, where folks can get uh, the free testing uh, that they need in order to understand their risk associated with the coronavirus. The coronavirus has devastated uh, the nursing homes uh, in uh, Representative uh, Jackson's district as well. Uh, residents are quite concerned. Uh, uh, families are quite concerned. Uh, so there are a, a, a lot of different uh, uh, COVID-related issues, and it, uh, not just healthcare, but economic uh, as well. The unemployment rate is far too high. 
uh, although we were, we were told uh, at the last look that uh, the numbers in Indiana uh, were better, uh, that was before we got some of the more recent results. Uh, if you pay attention to those results, you know that in Indiana, the, there's an uptick now in the number of new cases. Not as bad as Arizona, Texas, and Florida, but headed in the absolute wrong direction. And, and that means that there's going to be an uptick in deaths and hospitalizations. That's already started. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, and one of the issues I find most worrisome, uh, is that the percentage of cases that are positive uh, of the of the tests that are being done it has more than doubled in the last couple of weeks. It used to hover in the three percent area. Now it's up closer to eight or nine percent. So, all worrisome signs, and that means that I strongly believe we need to slow down with respect to trying to get kids back to school in the normal situation five days a week, uh, like our president has uh, has been uh, demanding. Uh, both publicly and through his uh, uh, Secretary of, uh, of Education, uh, uh, Ms. DeVos. That is, it's, it's ludicrous to expect that, that, that the, uh, the parents of our, of our state, the, the children in our state, and the teachers in our state and the support staff uh, should accept uh, that, that kind of risk without full attention to every other possibility of how we can make sure that our kids get the education they need safely. That means more uh, online resources, hardware and software. Uh, that means uh, all kinds of other distance learning opportunities uh, for the kids. And that means that we're going to have to provide some space uh, for those kids that are not able to stay at home when the parents have to work. And perhaps the schools can be part of the solution there as well. So lots of challenges that, that she wants to have met for her district and I'm sure other representatives in the state uh, feel in, in, a, in a similar way and that's what uh, Linda Lawson and I want to do. We want to represent uh, uh, her interest uh, uh, and uh, that of those of all of the other uh, districts as we move to a, a better Indiana. An Indiana that, uh, that wants to uh, succeed in all ways for all people. Uh, and that's why our phrase is uh, we're going to put uh, 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 people over politics. Uh, Indiana has been a state far too satisfied from a governmental perspective uh, with the status quo. Uh, our phrase is good enough is no longer good enough uh, here in Indiana, which is why I believe uh, we need a, a change and why I believe that 1.3 million Hoosiers will give us that opportunity. So uh, great trip uh, to Lake County. Uh, we're headed back. Uh, we'll be home in probably about an hour and a half, uh, but we won't rest long. Uh, We'll take a deep breath and we'll get back to work uh, on the computer, back to work online, uh, and get ready uh, for uh, all of the activities activities that tomorrow brings. I, I'm hoping that uh, you, our Facebook Live uh, friends, can can give us a hand in our campaign. Uh, clearly, you know that we are on social media: Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter at Dr. Woody Myers, D R W O O D Y M Y E R S. Our website is easy. It's www.drwoodymyers.com. Again, it's D-R-W-O-O-D-Y-M-Y-E-R-S. We'd uh, love it if you uh, gave, uh, gave us a look, looked at our policy positions, and uh, help out the campaign in any way you, you, you can. I feel very strongly that we have got to get uh, Donald Trump uh, uh, a retirement plan uh, this November. Uh, because he's just doing so much damage to our country, pardoning his friends, uh, uh, emboldening our, our enemies, uh, and, and just not paying attention to the most important uh, global pandemic uh, we've ever had. And I just know we can do better in the White House, we can do better in the State House. That's why Linda and I uh, want to uh, help our governor retire uh, as well. So if you'd like to help us out, please go to our website again, www.drwoodymyers.com. And we're going to keep bringing you the, these Facebook Lives as we get out and about our, our terrific state. Uh, thank you very much for spending time with us. Uh, I, I appreciate it uh, very much.